Huge search tonight in the mid-Canterbury town of Ashburton. Police fear foul play. The 15-year-old left home to walk her dog on the afternoon of New Year's Eve. The dog was found earlier today tied to a tree. Now being identified as belonging to missing teenager Kirsty Bentley. Murder, abduction or missing? Searching for missing Ashburton teenager Kirsty Bentley. The body was removed from an area near the Rakaia River. It is Kirsty Bentley's body that's been found. Kirsty Bentley took her dog for a walk in Ashburton about 3 p.m. on New Year's Eve 1998. The 15 year old was reported missing several hours later when she didn't return home. The next morning, the dog was found tied to a tree near the Ashburton River. Kirsty's underwear were found nearby, but she remained missing. Her body was discovered in a forestry block about 40 minutes drive from her home a fortnight later. She'd suffered a blow to the back of the head. More than 20 years later, the crime remains unsolved and continues to haunt her family and friends. That's how I'm always going to remember her, is being that innocent 16-year-old who was into Winnie the Pooh, Spice Girls, Nickers on the Block. She liked Kevin because everyone else liked Nick Carter because he's the most popular one. You know, That's where it stops. I don't see her any older. I can't. I just can't, I can't, I see it just like that and then that's it. I can't see what she was like in the future. And that's probably how I want to remember her anyway. The discovery of Kirsty's dog and her underwear along a route they were known to walk near the Ashburton River is one of the most perplexing aspects of the homicide inquiry. The area, a short distance from her home, was thoroughly searched the night the teenager went missing and the dog was neither seen nor heard. Detective Inspector Greg Merton is the latest police officer to take charge of the investigation and believes the scene was staged. For the dog to have been tied up by an offender would be very unusual and also for the clothing, the lower clothing to be, or the underwear and shorts to be taken off and then um, left there and then she not left there also is is unusual in terms of any abduction for sex type uh, crime from um, what we've seen in the past. So, yeah, whether the, the actual offence was committed here or not, we don't know. Two cannabis growers stumbled upon Kirsty's body in a forestry block in the Rakai Gorge, about 50 kilometres from Ashburton. Police believe the area wasn't chosen at random. Despite being close to a state highway, the terrain was rough and carrying the body to where it was found would have been physically demanding. Uh, this is uh, the Rakai Gorge area where Kirsty's body was found uh, about two weeks after she disappeared. The pine trees here are a lot older than they were then and so they're a lot higher and more um, overgrown but the rest of the landscape is very similar in terms of the bank up there which is quite heavily foliaged. She was found under a um, tree near this bank. She was partially buried, um, not in the dirt but more covered with foliage and she was in a fetal position. She still had all her uh, upper clothes on. It looked like she'd been placed there. Her clothing was um, not um, disturbed in any way. The way the body was placed uh, could be interpreted as telling us something about the murderer, but it's always difficult to get inside a murderer's head, and we don't want to draw too many conclusions from that, because it can lead you down a trail that might be incorrect. On behalf of Sid, Jill, John, I would like to warmly welcome you as we gather to say our farewells to someone who many loved and cared about, Kirsty Bentley. Kirsty's brother John was at home with his sister on the afternoon she disappeared. He and his father Sid were both looked at closely by police and have never been eliminated as suspects. Sid died several years ago under a cloud of suspicion due to inconsistencies in his statements to police. Both he and John have always denied any involvement in Kirsty's death. Kirsty's friend Ruth Cox believes the pair were treated harshly by the public. 
In Christchurch, when John went back to university, I would stay with him on the weekends and we would walk down the street. People would spit on him, yell abuse at him through the car, uh, through the car window. Um, Sid, he stayed in town and for years he couldn't walk down the street without people talking about how, oh, he must have killed her. These people that know nothing about the family, Kirsty, nothing. Since taking over the investigation, Greg Merton has kept an open mind about who might have killed Kirsty. He's looked closely at Russell Tully, the man responsible for the 2014 work and income shootings in Ashburton, and Jason Frandy, who abducted and murdered a hitchhiker near Waimati in 2012, but is confident neither was involved. He remains optimistic about the prospect of someone being caught. You know, if we look at other cases that have been resolved recently, 20 years later, they do get resolved. So, yeah, there's always the hope uh, that that will happen, especially for Jill and, and uh, the family. Ruth Cox despises the person who killed Kirsty. She says it would be a relief to see an end to a case that's caused pain for so many people. I want closure. She needs closure. We all do. I just, it'd be good to have a name or a face to put all my anger towards and move on.